happy Friday, Mustangs. Oh my goodness, I have a song forming in my head. I wonder if you want to work on it with me. I was thinking about our great eight reading strategies and I started to create this song and I think it's going to go like this. The great eight. The great eight. And then, if I can do eight every time, my reading will be so sublime. Sublime means really good. It's chef's kiss. So sublime. And then we're going to do the different reading strategies. And we're going to do hand motions for all of those. So we'll say predict, predict, visualize. Pretend you're holding a book, you're scratching your chin. Self-monitor and clarify. You go back to check and reread. Ask questions. Infer, like a light bulb's going off. Connect, just like we do our connecting fingers. Summarize, like we're doing our plot mountain, first, next, then, finally. Summarize. Evaluate, we'll give a thumbs up or thumbs down. Evaluate and synthesize. Synthesize like putting it all together. You want to try that again with me? Predict, visualize, self-monitor and clarify. Ask questions, infer, connect, summarize, evaluate, synthesize. <laughs> that last part is pretty fast. Awesome! Okay, and then it's going to go like this. What makes readers great? The great eight. The great eight. Awesome! You did it! Oh my gosh, okay. So I'm thinking that song will be super fun for us to sing together. And maybe today, if we're able to finish our great eight, we have six done, we need two more, then we can have our dance party and we can sing our great eight song. What do you think? Yeah? Oh, me and Happy the Hippo, we are so happy about these reading strategies and so excited to do this with you. Okay, so today what we're going to do in order to do these last two strategies really well, I'm gonna try to reread the book to you without stopping. So I'm just gonna read the whole thing through and that's gonna help us to summarize at the end or tell what the story was all about. It's also gonna help us evaluate to think if we liked it or not and to synthesize, kind of get a whole big picture out of it, thinking about what we learned. All right, we are going to read our objective to get started. Here it goes. I can use the great eight reading strategies as I read to better understand and enjoy my book. So same objective as the other two lessons this week, but we're finally getting to our last two great eight strategies. So excited. Okay, I'm gonna put Happy here. I know she's going to listen as we read. An elephant grows up. So listen carefully. Think about, remember I told you guys last time that this book is a narrative nonfiction, which means it's full of facts, but it's told in an order with a beginning, middle, end. So that means that when we summarize today, we have two options. We could summarize the way that we are used to summarizing nonfiction, which is thinking of a main idea and detail web. You could do it that way. But also, because it's told in an order, like a regular fiction story, we could use first, next, then, and last, or finally. So we can do either way today. Think about which way you're going to prefer doing, because at the end, you'll have a chance to summarize with your partner. Oh my goodness, which I almost forgot to tell you to get the things you need. Oh my gosh, Ms. Asimus. Okay. Before I read, please grab your turn and talk partner and please grab your notebook and something to write with. Go ahead. Okay, now we can really get started. An Elephant Grows Up. Written by Anastasia Suen. Illustrated by Michael L. Denman and William J. Hewitt. Welcome to the world of wild animals. Follow a baby elephant and her brother as they grow up under the hot African sun. As they become adults, they separate and have their own families. Under the hot African sun, a baby elephant is born. The calf looks small next to her mother, 
but she weighs more than a refrigerator. A female elephant is called a cow. A male is called a bull. Less than an hour after birth, the elephant calf can stand. She's already taller than your kitchen table. The calf is hungry, so she nuzzles up to her mother to drink milk. Calves are covered in hair when they are born. Older elephants only have long hair at the ends of their tails. Mothers and their young stay together in one herd. Young adult males and older males roam by themselves or join small herds of other males. The herd stays in one place for several days after the calf is born. Once the new calf can walk, the herd will move on. Elephants often walk in single file lines along the trails. The calves walk behind or next to their mothers. Looking for food is a full-time job for elephants. They spend about 16 hours a day eating. They only sleep a few hours a day. The oldest cow in the herd leads the other elephants. She traveled these same trails when she was a calf. The long trail leads the elephants to a popular gathering place, the water hole. They visit the water hole at least once a day. At first, the calf uses her mouth to drink the water. As she grows older, the calf learns how to use her trunk. She sucks water into her trunk and then blows it into her mouth. An elephant's trunk, trunk is the elephant's upper lip and nose. Some young elephants suck their trunks like babies suck their thumbs. The calf grows up fast. She begins to eat plants like the older elephants. She also uses her trunk to grab leaves high in the trees. Mothers nurse their calves for about two years. Only after the mother stops nursing will she have another baby. The calf uses her tusks to dig for water. Some elephants use their right tusk more. Other elephants prefer their left tusk. It's just like being right-handed or left-handed. A new surprise has arrived in the herd. At four years old, the calf now has a baby brother. When full-grown male elephants are much larger than female, oh, calves soon start to use their tusks for more than just digging. They use their tusks for resting their heavy trunks or ripping bark off trees. The tusks can also be used as weapons when needed. African elephants are the largest land animals. The brother and sister have grown a lot, but they are still growing. Most elephants keep growing until they are 30 or 40 years old. When the brother is about nine years old, he will join a different herd. The sister will stay with the cows and the calves in her herd and start a family. Bulls and cows live apart. At mating time, they call one another with low sounds that humans cannot hear. The elephant family continues to grow. The calf grew up and became a mother herself. She is now called a cow. Her brother also started a family in a different herd. He is now called a bull. A new journey begins under the hot African sun. A mother elephant always watches over her calf to make sure all is well. Okay, and then we had our diagram and our map and our glossary and our index. So we finished reading the book a second time. And now it's time for us to do our seventh great strategy, summarize. So before I told you, you could choose which way you wanted to do this today. You um, have your notebook and I have a space on my notebook for summarize, but I don't want you to write down your summary. What I do um, want this for is if you choose to use our strategy of a main idea and details map like we used to do, you can use this to fill that out. And that might help you to retell the story to your partner. Now, if you don't want to do main idea and details and instead would like to just think about first, next, then finally for this book, then you don't have to write anything down. You can just think and then when you're ready, turn and tell your partner. 
I'm going to be turning and telling my partner, Happy the Hippo, all about my summary. And I, myself, am going to be using sequencing words. First, next, then, and finally. Okay, go ahead. Take your time. Tell your summary. And then when you're done, you can unpause the video and come back. Go ahead. Finally, the baby is now fully grown and she has her own baby. Oh, they're all done. Okay, how did it go? I hope that whatever you chose to do, either a main idea and details map, or if you chose to just use sequencing words to retell, I hope you're able to retell a lot of the details that you learned in this book. I'm gonna model just what I had done with Happy, my partner, and see if that helps you with what you had done with your partner. Okay, I often like to use a book to help me retell or summarize what I read. I'll just flip through some pages and it jogs my memory. So, um, happy, in this book, An Elephant Grows Up, it was all about the life of a baby elephant. And so at first the baby was born, but she was already so big and already super tall and she was had lots of little hairs all over her body and she drank her mother's milk and then when she was ready to walk then the herd all started walking but they wouldn't leave her before that which was really cool and so once they start walking they go and they're looking for water so when they're walking they always seem to be protecting the babies by walking in a straight line or having the baby calf walk next to the mother and then they make it to the watering hole so at the watering hole they go there at least once a day and a lot of the elephants gather there to drink water and the calf at first she uses her mouth to drink water but then as she grows older she starts to learn how to use her trunk to drink water and then the baby keeps getting older and older and now she starts to eat vegetation or the leaves on the trees and they also learn to dig for water with their tusks. And now the, the baby elephant, she's four years old, Happy, and she now has a baby brother. Her mom had another baby. Oh my goodness, and then it told us that as they keep growing Happy, oh, I'm not sure if you could see Happy, I gotta move you. As they keep growing Happy, the brother, once he turns nine years old, he will leave and go join another herd. But the female, she will always stay with that herd, which is pretty cool. It also told me that they keep growing and growing until they're like 30 or 40 years old. And then finally, in the end, that baby from the beginning of the story is now fully grown and she has her own baby which is really cool. She starts her own family. She has a calf and now she's a cow because she's a mother elephant. Her brother also started a family. And that's the summary of this story. How did I do? I feel like I did a pretty good job. This story is pretty long. It's got a lot of details, but I think that I covered a lot of them. Hey, we summarized, we did it, Happy. That is a whew, hard one to do. Now it's time for our last skill of our great eight skills. And so in our, my song that I was making up for evaluate when we think we like it or we don't like it and then synthesize, we kind of put the whole thing together. I have two things that I'm gonna be putting here and then I'm gonna ask you to evaluate and synthesize yourself. So for me, I'm first going to actually synthesize. So I'm going to think putting this whole thing together, what's something that I really learned from this book? I, when I started reading, had asked a question about um, how long, oh, where's my question? Oh, I wonder how long a baby elephant stays with its mom. And as I read, I realized, well, actually, it depends. If it's a girl baby elephant, she'll stay with the mom forever. If it's a boy baby elephant, he'll stay there until about nine years old. So. That was my new synthesized understanding. It was one little piece and I could actually have many things I learned, but it's okay, just pick one thing to focus on. So I said, I learned that female baby elephants 
always stay with their moms. Only the males leave around nine years old. So that was me synthesizing what I learned from this book, putting it all together. And then I also evaluated, I thought if I liked the book or not. And I said, and Happy agrees with me, we said, I enjoyed reading this because I think elephants are beautiful animals and the book taught many facts. So that's why I think it's a great book. I really like the order it tells things in. It was easy for me to understand the order of events. And I love learning about elephants because they're so cool. Okay, so now it is your turn to evaluate and synthesize. So on your sheet in your book, on our last half of our page, we have this half cut. We had our space for summarize, which we might not have used, and that's okay. But now I want you to write evaluate and synthesize. And then I want you to do just like me. Think about something that you learned that you did not know before you read this book. So synthesize, put it all together. What did you learn from this book? And don't tell me everything, but pick something. And then I want you to evaluate. Did you enjoy this book or not? And you can use these two sentences. I learned blank and I enjoyed or I did not enjoy reading this because blank. Okay, you can also talk to your partner about these two things first if you want and then write it or you can write it and then talk to your partner. Go ahead. Okay, how did you do? Evaluating and and synthesizing. These are really big reading strategies and they are some of the hardest ones to do. So kiss your brain for your efforts. This stuff is tricky, but it will get easier the more that we practice. So guys, look, we did all eight of our reading strategies. We completed the grade eight, which means we get to have our dance party. Yes, we do, but before we have our dance party, let's sing our song one more time. Okay, I'm gonna try to do it a little bit smoother this time. Try it with me. Here we go. The great eight. The great eight. If I can do eight every time, my reading will be so sublime. Oh, now we go. Oh, here we go. Predict, visualize, self-monitor, and clarify. Ask questions, infer, connect, summarize, evaluate, synthesize. <laughs> what makes readers great? The great eight. The great eight. Woo, we did it! Nice job! Oh my gosh, okay. So I've got some of our friends here from some of our other reading lessons. We got Cleo, we have Tad, we have Happy the Hippo. I got my flamingo friend too. We have, oh my goodness, so many. My panda. I think his name was Eggy. I forgot. We also have, oh my goodness, our llama from Run 14. Okay, so all of these friends are here to dance with you. Are you ready? I'm gonna put on the music. Here we go. Get up and dance because you did the great eight reading strategies. Here we go. Good job. I hope you will continue your dance party well into the night because you guys are doing some really awesome stuff with reading. So I am very proud of you. And I know your teachers, Ms. Tapia and Ms. Price, they are also really proud of you. So keep up the great work. All these um, strategies that you did in your notebook, you're gonna be taking a picture of that to send to your teacher too. So don't forget to do that. Okay, let's look at our objective one more time and see how we did. I can use the great eight reading strategies as I read to better understand and enjoy my book. Oh, guys, we did it. We did all eight. So that was awesome. Kiss your brain. And we will see you next week. This is the end of us reading nonfiction. So we will actually be reading fiction books for the next two weeks that we have left and we'll practice our great eight strategies with fiction books as well can't wait to do that and i will see you guys soon okay 
Bye.